This is a NAD uh, T748 uh, surround sound receiver with uh, HDMI and all kinds of gubbins, uh, which we have declared brain dead in a previous video. So, today I was about to rip some pieces out of it, but that uh, project turned into nothing. So I figured while I've got its carcass out, we'd uh, make an attempt to uh, turn this into an analog uh, audio amp because if I remember correctly uh, this thing was relatively well labeled and uh, it should be pretty easy to just inject uh, your own audio signal uh, into uh, the amplifier board because uh, I can see here uh, we've got the labels for all the pins on this little riser board and uh, a reverse engineering of power supply to turn it on really shouldn't be too big of a deal. So that's, uh, I believe, a much better use of this thing than just having it in, a, in the parts bin. Because, for all we know, the amplifier could be of decent quality. Uh, now, its original is fan cooled in order to provide its rated 8 bit power, but uh, this still is a decent size heatsink, and uh, maybe I, I'll even go as far as to cut some of this. A boring metal work out of a chassis to improve cooling and we can probably have a pretty decent maybe a 50 to 100 watt per channel uh, amplifier. I'm not sure what it's rated for uh, really. I mean this transformer is not big enough for more than two times 100 watts continuously if you compare it to a real amplifier but uh, yeah I think we can certainly do worse than having this thing analog. So let's just give it a go. Ah, yes, for once my memory does not fail me. See, this is the riser board where the uh, original input board with the HDMI's and all the RCA plugs used to go. And right here we've got the best label ever. We've got pin numbers labeled pre-8 surround right, pre-8 BSL, pre-8 BSR, pre-8, uh, all, all, all pre-8 things. And uh, this is right by the pre-output connectors, uh, where you could actually just use this as a HDMI AV receiver and driving external amps. And uh, I believe this here uh, is probably a Class A amplifier for driving these pre-outs. So, uh, just, just guessing uh, from, from what I would believe is going on here is uh, We've got uh, signals coming in somewhere on this riser uh, and uh, going, uh, splitting out to the uh, pre-amplifier for the actual uh, amplifier here, which is in that direction, and uh, also splitting to this uh, pre-8 driver amplifier. So if we just inject our signal into this thing, uh, we should get signal both out of there and out of the speakers so long as we can fool the speaker relays to go on and the power supply to turn on and I think that's not going to be a big deal at all. And never mind that actually because uh, I just had a look at the uh, driver board for the power amplifier and it seems it's even simpler than that because we've got a pin header which goes straight into the HDMI input board or analog input board uh, and uh, it's labelled with all the different in signals we want and this is clearly just an analog amplifier so uh, all we actually want to do is inject our signal onto here right so the next thing is going to be trying to fool this uh, uh, power management board to actually turn the whole thing on uh, because the amplifier is actually plugged in right now and uh, it's not turned on it's in standby because it's got no brains uh, but <laughs> Nat have been kind enough to even label this board because we've got uh, uh, pins labeled uh, power on, standby 5 volts, power down and pl plus 12 volts as well as a standby 5 volts 6 rail. So if we measure the voltage on the power on pin uh, we can determine if that's uh, uh, active high or active or low. Uh, that's measuring not 0 volts so that's going to be active high and uh, luckily it's right by the standby 5.6 volts pin, so we can just try and bridge that with our probe and see what happens. Here we go. There it goes, tick. That starts humming. And uh, that's going to be powered on. How easy. 
All right, I've now put a solder blob across the uh, 5 volt standby and power on pin. So, for me to plug it in, it turns on. It's drawing about 12 watts in standby with no preamp installed. Uh, so, there's just one more thing we need to do before we can start thinking about putting audio into this thing, and that's uh, we need to figure out how to turn the speaker relays on because, well, else we're not going to get any audio. Uh, and uh, we need to consider this plug for that because it, it's so helpful labeled protection in front speaker on side speaker on BS speaker on HP that's probably headphone relay on so there's a bunch of uh, relay inputs there which we need to uh, enable in order to actually get audio out of this thing and uh, I'm gonna do the same thing as I did on the uh, pay supply, have us to just to see if they're active high or active low and then try and put like 3.3 volts or something across them, see what happens. Alright, I've marked out some pins of interest where we've got, uh, what is it, 21 is level protect in, uh, 22 is front speaker in, 23 is uh, uh, side speakers and uh, 24 is uh, BS speaker. What's going, to, what's going to be backside, perhaps? I don't know. So let's just uh, turn it on and see what voltages we have there. Oh yeah, and I've also marked out the, the 5.6 volt standby here, which we can use to just uh, steal some voltage if these are active high. Contact. So it's powered on. Let's see what we get. Protectors. Low. And these are the relay pins, low, low, they're all low. So, ah oh yeah, actually, we're gonna need to install the uh, brain box uh, because uh, that's actually got some uh, voltage regs on it which uh, are utilized by the amplifier board. Bit of a shame, but uh, we can't draw any conclusions without having that in there. Alright, brain board installed and it's putting 8 voltages, so let's uh, try that again and see what we get. And uh, all the protects still seem to be low. So I'm betting if we put some voltage on those, they're going to pair on. Alright, it seems like I couldn't grab 5.6 volts from there because it seems to be supplied from somewhere on the main board and it's not turned on by default and either way I don't want to have this connector plugged in because I'm going to be injecting signals and stuff there. So I just uh, grabbed uh, 5.6 volts from the uh, standby pay supply, uh, same stuff, same ground, it's all fine uh, and it's in series 4 for 150 ohm resistor so uh, it's not going to catch fire if we do something wrong so I'm just going to put my meter in current mode and uh, see how much uh, current was sinking these in case there's something uh, I haven't counted on and done wrong and uh, it doesn't want any 5 volts at all uh, then we're gonna see that it's drawing as much current as it can sink through the 150 ohm resistor and uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna minimize any damage we do. And now we've got 5.6 volts coming out of this relative to a case ground so hopefully when we put this to uh, either of these uh, uh, pins, uh, a relay is uh, gonna tick on the uh, amplifier board. But alas, that is not the case. It's just drawing 2 milliamps. Uh, I think I'm gonna try with the uh, preamp board installed uh, because I just noticed that we've got uh, a pin here labeled amp relay switch. Uh, on the preamp board and uh, I'm not sure if uh, that's the pin we need to manipulate in order to turn all the relays on or if uh, that's something required to enable all the pins but uh, I'm gonna try it, we'll find out. Alright, I bit the bolt and took the main board out of the amp because it wasn't that big of a deal and there seems to be some magic going on about the relay switching here because there seems to be two different mechanisms by which this amplifier can disable the speaker relays. Uh, one is by the preamp board through the uh, relay output and uh, the other is from the uh, uh, DSP board, the big brain box. Uh, and uh, they go through two different routes 
And I think they work by essentially being in series, one breaking the negative side, one breaking the positive side. Uh, so the uh, uh, amplifier board uh, has its pin uh, going pin number three and this little blob in there going to these two transistors up here and uh, these are then connected in uh, series, I believe it's a Darlington configuration and uh, they are then connected on to uh, the, one of the pins of all of the relays and if we beep it out uh, we can see the relays here by the footprints. Here, here's the coil and here are the contacts and we've got one, two, three, four, five relays and uh, pin one of these is connected together. So uh, pin one is uh, just one circuit and that goes to uh, this transistor and that's, that's uh, uh, connected to the other transistor which goes to, let's see if I can get my pins right, there we go, to the pin on the pre preamp board. Uh, so that's one mechanism for breaking it, however, the other side of the relay, uh, the one is labeled 6 on all the relays, uh, uh, they go to separate transistors in what I believe to be the preamp output driver circuit and here we see the same arrangement we've got the uh, two transistors in series and uh, one of uh, one of them is uh, connected to the relays so if we beep a couple of them if I can find the right ones that one goes to that re relay then that one goes to that relay and so forth but yeah they're, they're, they're in logical order uh, and uh, then we have let's see there they go Come on, where are we? Where are we? There we go. So that's going to that pin on that uh, transistor and that transistor is then connected onwards to the next transistor. And this transistor is connected through I'll leave that pin to one of the pins on the uh, brain box uh, connector here. And uh, this uh, coincides with the labeling uh, on the board for the different speaker uh, enabled pins. Uh, so, we need to probably fool both systems. I'm not sure uh, by which mechanism the uh, uh, pre-driver board here is uh, uh, switching the uh, pin, but I wouldn't think it's uh, controlled by the uh, brain box because I, I don't think that in, there really are any inputs, say, for signals on it. I'm going to have to do some more digging. Uh, so I think I'm just going to try and bridge all of these uh, separate speaker circuits uh, to, I believe, ground. Yes, ground, because we, if we have a real close look, we can see uh, that we've got a snobber diode across each relay, and the uh, negative side of the diode is connected to pin 1 which is the one that's controlled by the amplifier board. So we know that polarity of the relay is positive negative. That means that if I connect this to uh, ground or the negative 12 volt rail, uh, that's gonna be enough to uh, enable the relays. Oh yeah, that's another thing I noticed. Uh, these transistors over here, which uh, do the, the switching for the uh, uh, brain box uh, are actually powered by the negative 12 volt rail. So it could actually be that uh, we need a negative voltage here uh, in order to actually enable the relays. In case the amplifier uh, pre driver board just uh, grounds out the pin of a relay and uh, is just expecting there to be a negative voltage on the other one. That's a bit of a weird way of going about it, but uh, it's entirely possible. I'm going to have to uh, kind of power this up at a the case and uh, see what's really going on. But we are making progress. Okay, so I've now wired up for a test. Uh, I'm, we're probing the relay output of the pre-driver board. So the board that's actually got all the pre-drivers and stuff. I keep using different names for it. It's like, let's go, this is for DSP board. This is a pre-driver board. Right, so we're probing the output of the pre-driver board to see if it goes uh, high, low, ground, negative. 
what have you, when we turn it on. I'm thinking, theorizing that uh, there might be an analog protection circuit on the actual pre-driver board in case of brain death and power amplifier failure in order to stop your speakers going to shit. That's why they'd have this uh, dual system. So let's turn it on. I don't think anything's gonna go on fire, but if it does, then that's exciting. So that seems to be going 50 hertz. Maybe in collector or something. Do I have a dicky connection? Well, that looks like a dicky connection. I've now reconnected the brain box here, and now when we turn it on, we get 3.3 .3 volts out of the uh, output. So, oh, that doesn't really answer our question. It does tell us that it's probably a 3.3 .3 volt level signal, uh, but it, we don't know if it wants the speakers to be on or off. Either way, it seems as if it's just a digital thing controlled by the brain box, so we can just discard it. I think I'm just gonna jury rig the relays to be on all the time. Who cares? All right, so I've now connected up all the relays in parallel, and I've pulled out a couple of leads here, uh, which are just connected straight across relays, so we can now measure to see if there's any negative or positive voltage on either terminal, and uh, it does not seem to be. Those just look pretty much open circuit. So, uh, if we just uh, put uh, 12 volts across there, uh, all the relays should tick, and then we can start thinking about putting some signals into this thing. And here come the power bar leads. So, I label the positive and negative according to the orientation of the diodes. Let's uh, clamp on slowly turn it up and see where the smoke comes out. And there we have some clicking at uh, 8 volts, drawing 150 milliamps. Pretty much what you'd expect out of a bunch of relays. So, 200 milliamps, I don't think, I don't think we're putting anything on fire. So let's uh, see if uh, we can actually see something on the 8 bit of the amplifier because really the amp should be up and running by now. Alright, I've shoved the escape probe up its behind. Uh, the relays are still being powered on by the uh, lab pitifly, so let's just uh, turn on the power and see what we get. Negative 4 volts DC. That's no good. Uh, that's not even negative 4 volts, it's negative 40. It seems We've got all, all channels slammed into the negative rail. So, I'm pretty sure the power amp module on this is fine, so we must be missing some kind of signal to prevent that. Right, so, the DC issue went away when I connect this connector, uh, and all the pins on this are pretty uh, logically labelled, save for one which just says heat. Now, I don't think this has anything to do with the estrus cycle of the amplifier, so I've just uh, done a sim single jumper there to see if heat has some kind of uh, power on for the bias or something. So, let's give it another go and see if we get rid of our DC. Contact. Mm, nope. Ah, ah, hello there. That's, that's, that's me poking around in the amp, making some signals. So I just kept on connecting more uh, jumper wires uh, until one made a difference. And uh, the one I ended up connecting was uh, the ground for the surround right channel. And that is now the channel which is producing a signal. So it seems unless the signal ground is connected, there's something which causes just a huge DC offset. So now we get to try and inject a signal in here. So I'm just gonna uh, solder in a plug and uh, we'll put some kilohertz into this and see if we get kilohertz out. All right, I've now pulled out two wires from the the signal ground and the input to the channel we're looking at and just look at what happens to the scope when I prod this with my finger. That's 50 hertz hum right there. 
So I'm very excited. I think we've got it. So I checked to see if there's no huge differential voltage going on. And I've got the signal output of my HP 339A coming through these leads. So we're just going to hook it up, power it on, and see if we don't get a kilohertz out of the speaker. I think we will. All right, signal din is connected at three millivolts. So if this works, we're going to see some sine waves. Power on. Oh, there's something. There's something. It's messy and dirty, but there's something. Let's uh, turn off the signal level a bit. Oh, yes, there we go. That's a kilohertz. That is one kilohertz injected into the amplifier. Sweet. So now I just need to figure out which of those excess leads I can be rid of. I've now disconnected pins until it stopped working and uh, reconnected it until it then started to work again. And it seems uh, the only pins you really need to have connected to the mainboard are the uh, V ground pins and the signal ground pins. Uh, well, V ground is just one pin there, and uh, there's going to be one signal ground for each channel you want to use, else it gives the weird negative infinity DC offset issues. So, what I'm going to do now is just to remove this connector, uh, solder on all those uh, required pins, and uh, then we can move on to uh, trying to actually see if this works, if it performs reasonable, if it sounds good. If it does, we'll move on to actually making it into something useful. And now I've chopped off the connector, I've removed all the pins which are not necessary, which pretty much boils down to the entire inner row. You can pretty much leave all of these connections and it's not going to harm your operation. Uh, I did remove this end pin though since it was unnecessary, but I don't think it would do anything whether it was connected or not. So, now when we pair this thing on, uh, none of the channels should be committing the minus 40 volt Sudoku. And uh, we should be able to inject our signal onto any of these pins. Uh, because they, they've done a pretty decent job with the layout, because we've got all the signal grounds for the different channels here, and uh, all the signals here, plus some extra pins here in the end. So, fingers crossed, I think this is going to work. Let's power on. Check the colour of the smoke. No smoke. Uh, I am noticing it's uh, drawing a bit more current now than it was before. It's drawing 35 watts now, which it what it drew when the CPU board was installed by default and the uh, uh, with the modified connectors. So I think we've managed to enable all the channels. So let's have a poke around the back. Uh, the relay is enabled. Uh, if this works, we should have no DC offset on any of these channels. And we have nothing, 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 no offsets on any of the channels. So, I think we're free to inject our signal. Uh, something I just noticed while just randomly poking around was that uh, one of the relay con uh, wires we hooked up uh, is actually connected straight to ground. That's half a name to ground. So that one just seems to go right to ground on the amplifier. So uh, I also measured the voltage on this while connected to the uh, lab power supply. And if we connect that up and measure between ground and uh, the output, we're getting a lot of ohms. Uh, negative 10.5 volts. So, uh, to enable the relays, all I really need to do is connect this wire to the negative 12 volt rail, and I think we can tap that off of this connector. And yes, indeed, if we go to pin 27, that's negative 12 volts. So, Let's just uh, solder that to work in and see if we can't run the relays without an external power supply. If this works, we'll see negative 12 volts per meter and the relays will go tick. And that negative 12 volt clearly seems to be a bit too weak. I don't know, hang on, there's some spooky magic going on because 
Now I'm measuring between the actual, over the actual relay checks, and they're still pretty decent. Minus 11 volts across them, it's just that the, somehow the voltage just sinks down to ground there. That's weird. Well, eh, if it works, it works. That's, it's, I don't think they'd implement several different negative 12 volt rails just for this application. There's certainly not enough regulators for it, so. And we'll see what happens. If it sounds good and works and doesn't smoke, it's good enough for me. Now, something which could call for a more advanced uh, relay turn on would be if there's a horrible amount of DC yet power on. So we're probing one of the channels at random. And uh, let's see how this looks. Yeah. Horrible. All right, never mind. If you actually put a signal or rather an impedance on the uh, a signal pin so that it's not just floating open, uh, it gets way better. I just turn it on there without uh, it even triggering at a trigger level of what? 400 millivolts, so that's not too bad. All right, screw this coupe. Let's use something far less refined. Brace your ears. That sounds absolutely beautiful. Doesn't sound bad at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. That's working just fine. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with this power on. doesn't even pop. Let's make this interesting. Uh, this could be absolutely horribly ugly if the 8-bit impedance of the tape 8-bit of my test stereo is too high and it gets overwhelmed by 50 hertz hum, so... Uh, brace yourself! Ah. That sounds like music to me. working lovely. Uh, it does have super giant gain. It has to be close to 40 dB though because the computer set to like 4% volume at max that's like 2% now. So well, that's good though. Uh, that means it's easy to just passively use a volume control. You don't need any gain inside to uh, make it work. Well, that's perfect. But this, this is all we need. It pairs on fine. It doesn't have any protection in case it breaks, but uh, all it's lacking is a volume control. All right, I've now put together a, a quick uh, volume control board uh, with uh, a couple of RCA inputs and I've soldered it onto the input there. It's the ugliest to just get it over with uh, very bored uh, thing you've ever seen. So I'll spare the details, but in essence, we've got two potentiometer, one main volume control and one attenuator, which goes to all but the two front channels. Uh, so you can have two volume levels for different speakers or players or what have you. I'm just gonna bolt this to the front when I'm done with it. Uh, I've worded up here, just one wire per channel, nothing fancy, and two jumpers to, of course, jumper over to the extra channel since I've only got four eight bits of this thing and uh, seven, is it seven? It's gonna be, how many channels does this thing have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven channels. I've got seven channels to drive. So uh, four identical and the center just uh, connected up to whatever was closest. I think it's a left channel. But this should work and we should have signal going into this. So that when I actually plug it in and flip the switch, we should be able to control the volume. Here we go. It did not explode. So, I'm going to stall the potentiometers back to front. Oh, 
Oh no, no I haven't. So we're on one of the extra attenuated channels, so that's working just fine. So this has the attenuation and uh, this one sets the main volume. Excellent! Sweet! So let's just uh, poke the speaker into all the channels to make sure they work. So that's uh, one channel, here comes another. Perfect, and another. Better. Let's turn it up. So here comes another, and another, and another, and another. Now that's going to be all your seven channels. Working a treat. So... Now uh, I've just got to make a hole in the front panel for that board and we're done. Fuck everything called ESD protection and DC coupling and uh, DC coupling, AC coupling caps and whatever. We don't need that. It's entirely unnecessary. Alright, and we've got it together. DSP board. Get it? DSP. Board mounted to the front, panel knobs protruding out the front, and I've even gone to the effort of grinding it a square hole to mount a power switch. So that's just connected across the solder block we had making this permanently on before. Why is the zip tied in place? We've got a couple of uh, input jacks on the back. Engage! 